I am very excited to do this video. This, this is one of the coolest properties I have ever come across. And, uh, well, yeah, I mean, let's not even, wait. let's get started. Uh, this is the integral that we we're going to solve. It's uh, like a Gaussian, it's a generalized Gaussian. Normally we, we know how to solve e to the minus x squared. Uh, we spent two videos doing that. And uh, now what we're going to do is answer a question that maybe you've been thinking about from the beginning. Well, you know, our, our trick with the x squared was great. You know, we, we square the integral, we were able to solve it, that's awesome. But what do we do when we look at something a bit more general? I mean, we, we could have put any polynomial up there that we wanted to. So, so how, how are we going to solve that? How, how are we going to do this if p is equal to 4 or 6 or, or 3 or, or 1,000? You know, what, what, what do we do in that case? And here's how we're going to do this. We're going to start by solving a related, more, more general integral. We're going to start by solving this integral right here x to the s minus 1, e to the minus x to the p dx. And so you can see that this integral reduces down to this integral when we set s equal to 1. So let's see what we can do with this integral right here. Let's see, uh, let's see what we can do with this guy. Uh, well, the first thing we can do, um, and th this requires a bit of foresight, but the first thing that we might try and do is, is split up this x into some, some suggestive form. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start, I'm going to take this x and I'm going to split it up into two pieces. I'm going to split it up into one piece that's x to the p minus 1 and one piece that's x to the s minus p. Then leave that e to the minus x to the p dx. All right? That's that's all fine and good. Nothing nothing illegal done yet. And then let's um do one more thing. Do one more thing with this. Uh, leave our x to the p minus 1, but I'm going to factor out a factor of p here. So, or, or rather, I'm going to rewrite this like this. x to the p times s over p minus 1, e to the minus x to the p dx. Okay, you know, so, so far, you know, not, nothing really shocking has been done yet, but now we're going to see why exactly uh, doing all this stuff works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a change of variables. And that change of variables is going to be uh, u equals x to the p, and hence du equals p x to the p minus 1 dx. Okay, what happens when we plug this in? What do we get? Well, here's what we get. We get our same integral. Our bounds haven't changed. My uh, zero to infinity, and then what happens? Well, we're going to have uh, this x to the p, which is now u. We're just going to have u to the s over p minus one, e to the minus u. And then what, what about our dx? Well, our dx is equal to what? It's it's equal to one over p du over x to the p minus one. Well, wait a minute. That's exactly what we have right here. So that term just cancels right on out. And we're left with this integral right here. And hopefully this integral is, uh, you know, light, lights are going off in your head because this integral right here, you'll remember, uh, is exactly our integral for the gamma function. Our gamma function is gamma of z integral 0 to infinity with the argument being x to the z minus 1 e to the minus x dx. Boom. And so we see... This integral is exactly the same in the same form as this, with our z being equal to s over p. And so then we see that this whole integral right here is equal to 1 over p gamma of s over p. And so we've done it. We've, we've, we've managed to, uh, we, we started with this integral. We, we did a whole bunch of manipulation, got it into a form of a gamma function, and then we get this guy out right here. And so we, we've done it. We've, we've solved for this integral right here, which really is, is nicer than this, right? I mean, this is a more general thing. We can vary s here such that we get, you know, x times e to the minus xp, x squared times e to the minus x to the p, you know, x to the n times e to the minus x to the p. So, so this right here is the key result right here. Uh, but, you know, we, we started out wanting to solve for this guy, so let's end with this guy. Our, our final result is thus that integral 0 to infinity 
e to the minus x to the p dx is equal to 1 over p gamma of 1 over p. Boom. And if, if you really want to, if you really want to, and this is what sometimes people do, uh, they, they use that property that uh, gamma of n plus 1 is equal to n gamma of n. And then they rewrite this as as gamma of 1 plus 1 over p. But we've done it. We've solved this super cool integral such such that now we know the answer to uh, well, what is e to the minus you know x to the fourth or, or e to the minus x to the sixth? We 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 now have that answer.